Greetings from Bermuda, this is BDA Lamy, and welcome to Railroute, a game about designing, building, and automating a railway network. The game has been in early access for the last two and a half years and has just hit 1.0. Developer has very kindly given me a key so I can take an early look at the game. Um, and so that's what I'm going to do now. Uh, I'm playing on a pre-release version of the 1.0 build, uh, but I think it's unlikely to change very much now between um, when I'm recording this and when you are watching this. So let's just jump straight in. Uh, so there are three different ways that we can play the game. We can either play in endless mode, uh, where we are building our railway network up from scratch uh, and unlocking technologies as we go to enable more complex routing and automating options. Um, there is also uh, rush hour mode where we uh, have a, a fixed map with a fixed set of stations um, but we can choose to build where uh, build track where we like and the game will throw uh, waves of trains at us that we have to dispatch between the stations uh, that gradually escalate in intensity uh, and then there is timetable mode uh, where we uh, can't build um, it's a fixed map um, and has a predefined timetable and it's all about us uh, dispatching the trains uh, to the stations and making sure they stick to that timetable as closely as possible in order to get the maximum score. Um, I think probably the best way to uh, get your head around how the game plays is to start with endless mode. Um, so that is what I'm going to do now. Um, we've got a whole load of different maps to choose from. Uh, you can also build your own maps uh, and there are a ton of maps on the Steam Workshop as well uh, that you can add into the game. Uh, but we're just going to start with, I think, one of the simplest maps, uh, which is Manchester. Um, so, fire it up. We will pause the game um, and I will kind of give you an overview. So, um, this is kind of how the game looks. We have um, a number of different stations around the map, um, some of which um, are uh, coloured, which means we currently own them. Uh, and then there are tracks uh, linking the stations as well, which is what we're going to dispatch our trains along. Uh, there are also other stations on the map that are kind of greyed out um, and track areas that are greyed out. Um, those we will be able to acquire during the course of the game. So the objective um, on an endless map, such as there is one, uh, is to earn a certain number of stars. Um, and we have to earn a certain number of uh, green XP stars and a certain number of red XP stars um, and then there is kind of a stretch goal uh, for an additional number of um, uh, well, an additional number of trains uh, I guess uh, that we have to dispatch uh, in order to get the final star um, so we'll see more about what the difference between uh, green and red trains is as we go uh, but broadly that's what we're trying to do um, and the numbers there correspond to um, the number of trains of that color um, that, um, that we managed to schedule in one hour. Um, so we have to have 20 green trains uh, completing um, legs of their journeys within an hour um, and 20 red trains within an hour. Um, in order to get that and to get the third star, we would have to have a total of 60 trains uh, of any type uh, completing their journeys within an hour. Uh, so um, there are a number of technologies that you saw briefly there uh, that we can unlock to help us as we go. Uh, they're arranged in tiers. Uh, so tier one, tier two, tier three of green upgrades. Uh, and then there are also three tiers of red upgrades as well. Um, and these will give us access to various technologies that are just going to make our life easier. Um, initially, we're going to start out where we're going to have to manually dispatch all of the trains. Uh, but as we go, we're going to be able to automate that process. Uh, and that's what's going to allow us to build up and gradually dispatch more trains during the course of an hour. Um, I will go into details about these uh, as we reach the, abil um, the ability to unlock them. Um, but you can see here, we the first thing we need to do um, is to dispatch eight green trains per hour. That will uh, give us uh, three red XP, um, which will allow us to start unlocking some of these things uh, as well. Once we uh, are getting uh, 10 green, this is actually XP rather than number of trains. So once we're getting 10 green XP per hour, we will unlock tier two upgrades. 
And once we are getting 25 green XP per hour, we will unlock the tier three upgrades. Um, and these numbers change according to the map as well. Um, so in this case, we're actually gonna get uh, our star uh, once we've got 20 XP per hour. Um, sometimes this star, I think, comes after the tier three. Uh, anyway, um, this is our money. Um, and we're gonna be able to spend this to do things like uh, buy track, buy new stations, um, and so on and so forth. Um, but let's just jump in um, and begin um, with manually scheduling our first train. So this icon here shows us uh, that there is a train uh, ready to be accepted to the platform. Um, and this uh, shows us where it wants to go. So it's going to come into Eccles on platform one. Uh, it then wants to go to platform one on Deansgate, followed by platform one on Manchester Oxford Road, followed by platform 11 on Manchester Piccadilly. So um, if we uh, accept that by clicking on it, and we can then pick a platform to take it in on, um, given it wants to come in on platform one, we better bring it in on platform one. And then if we unpause time, um, and I'll, I'll speed it up a little bit. Um, you see the train will come into the platform right there. Um, all the trains have a schedule. Uh, so you can see this one is due to arrive at 8 a.m. And it will stay on the platform until 8.03 a.m. Uh, and then it will leave. Um, and it's scheduled to arrive at Deansgate at 8.07. Stay on the platform until 8.10. Uh, and then so on and so forth. So this little countdown that we've got here is showing us how long is left until it is scheduled to leave this platform. Um, and then we have got to get it to Deansgate platform one. So initially, um, the way we schedule trains is completely manual. So we have, these are manual signals um, and these are points. Um, so we can click on them to change uh, which part of the track is connected together. So um, and that just kind of flips it like that. So we want uh, this track to go this way so the train can come down here and then this point is already currently set and will take us into platform one on Deansgate. Once we're happy, we've got everything set correctly. We can then uh, turn the signal to green um, and that will highlight the track in green and that will say this is basically cleared for a train to use this path um, whenever it is ready to do so. Uh, this little green arrow that's popped up here is going to be another train that we can choose to take, um, but I will show you that in a minute. We'll just dispatch this one train first. Um, so I'm going to speed things up a little bit more. Um, so we get the train moving. So you can see as it reaches zero, the train sets off, it leaves the station, um, and it heads down towards Deansgate, uh, where it should arrive at 8.07 a.m. Or possibly a little earlier. A little earlier. Being early is fine. Um, and then it's going to sit here until uh, 8.10. Uh, and then it's going to head to uh, Oxford Road. Uh, so we want to take it to platform one. So uh, we'll make sure the points are set correctly to go into platform one. And then we can turn the signal to green. Then once it reaches its departure time, it leaves. Heads over to Manchester Oxford Road. Uh, final place, Manchester Piccadilly, platform 11. So we can get ahead of it. We can set the points now correctly. Uh, we can set the signal to go. And speed it up a little bit faster. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, the game has actually said, uh, you must take another contract. Uh, so <laughs> we must take this train. Um, actually, I'm not sure what happens if we choose not to take this. Uh, I think we basically have to. These things that pop up here um, are what's called contracts. And so they are trains that we can either choose to take or not. Um, it doesn't matter if we choose not to take them. That's fine. They will just sit there until we either accept them or we uh, discard them. Um, but this one, uh, I guess early game, the, the, uh, the game will throw a couple of trains at you regardless. So... Uh, we've got to take this one uh, into platform 12, so fine. I'll click on it to accept it and say come in on platform 12. Um, and it's going to stay here until 8.18, and then it's going to want to go to uh, platform 2 uh, at Manchester Oxford Road. 
uh, which is interesting because we don't have platform two yet. Uh, and in fact, we can't even afford it. Hmm. Okay. Well, hopefully once this train gets here, uh, we will be able to afford it. Actually, we can probably change its platform. Can we change its platform? Let's see. Um, if we go into the edit window, um, and yes, I think we actually can. I don't think it's going to penalize us for this. It is not. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was not expecting that. Um, so we've, yeah, we've said, uh, we've edited the, the, uh, the details of the train there and said, uh, no, don't go into platform two, go into platform one instead. Uh, because we've got that. And so once this train is out of the way, uh, we'll be able to shoot, route that in there without too much problem. Uh, this is leaving right now. Uh, so basically, we should be fine. Speed things up a little more again. Um, now, what we don't want to do is uh, is turn on this signal now. Um, because that will uh, clash with this one and we don't want any collisions on our railway network. Um, so we want to wait till this has gone up here. And then as soon as that is clear, we can change the points there. Uh, and we can send this into platform one of Oxford Road. Um, so normally once we've got uh, trains accepted and running on regular schedules, um, you'll get a penalty if a train is a financial penalty if a train is late. Uh, or if a train is sent into the wrong platform. Um, so you want to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, now, once this train has completed its route, um, which it will when it leaves in four minutes, should get some money from that. You're going Deansgate platform two, that's fine. We'll route you in there now and turn the signal to go. Speed things up a little more. Okay, so um, this train uh, completed uh, its first run. Um, and the first run of a, of a new train is, uh, is a trial run. So you can basically just make sure that it fits into your current network fine. There are no scheduling problems. Um, it doesn't get delayed. Um, but if everything's running smoothly, um, you can accept it. Um, and that train will now come back every hour. Um, so in this case, um, it arrived into Eccles at 8 a.m. Um, so you can see down here in our timetable at the bottom, um, it's going to be coming back again at 9 a.m. Um, this being the current time right here in the middle. Um, so that's how you gradually build up the number of trains in the network. Um, you accept contracts. Um, you look and see whether you want the route. Um, you then schedule it in um, and you gradually build up. Uh, so you can see now we are um, we have earned one green experience from that train. Um, these are all green trains that I'm doing at the moment. We'll come to red trains later, um, probably in a few videos time. Uh, for now, we're just going to concentrate on the green ones. Um, red trains are, are things like freight trains, uh, they are regional trains that have a multi-leg journey, so they're a bit more complex to schedule. Uh, whereas the green trains are generally uh, simpler to handle, and so that's kind of what you start with. So we will unpause time again. And then once this has gone through, um, we'll start looking at some of these other contracts that have popped up and see which ones of those we want to accept. Uh, so this is going into Eccles Platform 1. Now what we... Uh, might want to do is, and what is generally a good idea to do as we're building up our network is to try to designate, you want as little overlapping tra track as possible. Because obviously if a train is coming eastwards along this portion of the track, it's stopping any other train uh, going uh, westbound along this portion of the track. Um, and it stops other trains going eastbound as well unless you put some signals along here to break things up. Um, so it's useful to designate platforms to be uh, going in one direction only. So we may say platform one for Eccles is only for eastbound trains uh, and not for westbound trains. And we might want to keep platform two for westbound trains. Um, you can see we got a bit more money there from the train that completed. We got 2,000 uh, credits. 
And in fact, we should see that if we bring up our complete list of contracts. Uh, so this is the one uh, that we did. And you can see it's next arriving at 9 a.m. It's from uh, Eccles uh, through Manchester Oxford Road, Manchester Piccadilly. Uh, and we've accepted it and it's paying $2,000 per complete run. And every complete run gives us one green experience point. This is the one that we're currently uh, scheduling now. Um, actually, no, that's uh, that's a lie. This is because uh, it's which one is this one? Eight fifteen. Uh, this one is what we're doing now. Uh, this is a live train. Uh, currently on a trial because we're doing the first run of it. Uh, going from Manchester Piccadilly, finishing at Eccles. Um, so um, we'll be able to see here as well is all of the offered contracts um, that have popped up in those little green chevrons that are appearing next to the stations. Um, but we will come back to this in a minute once we've got the basics, uh, the first few trains going. Uh, so this one's going to Eccles. So rather than taking it to Eccles Platform 1, uh, we're going to change this. Uh, and we're going to send it into Eccles Platform 2 instead. So we're going to edit the schedule. And because it's a trial train, there's no penalty for changing which platform it goes into. Uh, this shows us that we have a collision here. Uh, so I guess this is colliding with something else. Uh, that is going to come in, but I'm thinking we can probably change that and send that into one. So hopefully that doesn't become a problem um what we're also going to do now we've got a little bit of money is we're going to build uh if we can afford it uh, a separate eastbound and westbound track um, and that will let us get more trains through the system um and because everything is about how many trains you can get through your system in one hour um that is a good number to try and maximize so if we switch to the build menu here um so uh, we can basically build a bunch of different stuff. We can build train track, which is all the stuff in here. Um, and currently we only have one type of train track available to us, which is a slow train track. The maximum speed of the trains on it is 40 kilometers per hour. Um, as we go through, uh, some of the green upgrades will let us unlock faster track, um, which some of the faster trains uh, need in order for us to be able to get the maximum money from them. There are signals, uh, so the manual signals uh, that you can see on the track already. Um, and the next thing we're going to want to unlock is an auto signal, which is going to make our uh, dispatching job a little bit easier. Then uh, further into the game, we're going to be able to unlock sensors. And this is where we're really going to be able to start automating stuff. Um, so things like um, the departure sensor, we can see when a train is leaving a platform. Uh, if you're going in this direction, uh, then go to this signal. Um, similarly with the arrival sensor, we can put it outside a platform for trains coming into it and we can say uh, basically this sensor controls uh, all of the trains coming into this station and it will automatically route them to the correct platform um, depending on which platform they're supposed to go to in the schedule. Uh, but we'll see more of all this stuff later. Uh, and then there's also buildings. Um, the conductor office is these little things that we've already got on some of the stations which is providing us with the contracts. Um, and then there are different types of um, conductor offices. These are basically conductor offices that will provide us with red contracts when we get to that point. Um, and these provide us urban transit contracts, uh, which are basically like uh, subway trains. Um, but that's all much later on in the game. A couple of other things we're going to be able to unlock here. Uh, we can unlock tunnels um, later on in the game as well. Um, and I will talk about this now. I'll come back to that later. Uh, but for right now, we just want to see, do we have enough money to be able to build uh, a bit more track here? Um, so the answer is uh, no, we don't. Because uh, even the cheapest train track uh, costs us 800 credits per uh, cell that we move. So I'm thinking that actually we don't do anything right now. We just stick with what we've got. Uh, we set the points. This is now we're sending it to Eccles 2. Uh, so we're going to bring that in there. And then we're going to just let that run and go in. And at some point, the game is probably going to pop up another one of those warnings and say, hey, we got a new train coming in here. 
Uh, and I'm gonna say that's great, but I don't want it in platform two because that's gonna collide with this one. So send it into platform one instead, please. And this is basically doing the same thing as our first train did. Um, let's go to Eccles um, and then Deansgate, Manchester Oxford Road, Manchester Piccadilly. Let's change that schedule now to say platform one. Um, and yeah, you can see down here um, that doesn't cost us anything. So the value of the contract is uh, 2,000 credits. Um, and with the change, it will still be 2,000 credits. Like I said, this is a trial train, so we're free to change it uh, at this stage. These things is probably worth explaining a little bit of now because you're going to see a lot more of these. Um, so this shows us basically for each station and each platform at that station when trains are due to be in that platform. Um, and obviously that's incredibly important um, to avoid collisions um, and to uh, help us be sure that when our trains actually arrive at a particular station, uh, there's going to be a platform free for them to go into. Um, so uh, this train that we're about that we're accepting in now, uh, it is 8.29. It is arriving um, at 8.30. Uh, it will be on the platform at 8.30. Um, it will stay until 8.33. So that's the length of this uh, little yellow bar here. Um, you can see it overlaps with the train that uh, I've just brought in or I'm bringing in now on platform two. Um, but then this train will go on to Deansgate uh to uh actually what platform did we take the previous train in on dean's game uh i'm thinking it was one so i'm going to take that one in on, on one as well again try and keep one platform for eastbound trains and a different platform for westbound trains uh, and that's going to make our life much easier in fact it will uh it was platform i think um because i think that's is that the next one? That seems a bit early for the next one. Anyway, we're going to take it in on platform one. Uh, Manchester Ro Oxford Road, we've only got one platform. Manchester Piccadilly. Um, Manchester Piccadilly. Now, why is there one right there? So this is, uh, this is one that's going to come. This is a new one that is going to come in at 8.45. So I guess in the first hour of the game, uh, the game actually has a preset number of trains that it will force you to accept. Um, so again, just like we changed the platform for this one, I think we can actually send this in to platform 11. And then when we get this new one, we can say come in on 12. Uh, normally we, we won't want to do this. Like going forward, uh, collisions like this are to be avoided because changing the platforms will cost us money. Uh, once we've got a contract running. Uh, so let's just do that. Uh, so that brings in the train there. Three minutes until it leaves, which gives this guy just long enough to get off the track. And then we can set the points, taking it in to platform one. We can set the signal to go. And then we already know he's going to go to Manchester platform one, so we can clear that as well. Uh, if we clear a signal and then we subsequently decide that we, oh, uh, no, we actually don't want this train to go this way because we've got something else coming this way, we can unclear it by right clicking on it as well. Um, but for now, we will just clear that through. Uh, we've got another one of these pop ups because uh, this trial train has just finished. Um, so it says, Are you happy with this? Do you want to keep this train? Uh, do you want to reject it? Um, we will keep it because we are happy with that. Um, and again, that train will come back uh, in an hour's time. Um, so whenever you should, whenever you accept a train, you will get one every hour from that point onwards. Uh, freight trains are the one exception to that, uh, but most of the other trains run on an hourly schedule. Okay, so uh, Manchester Oxford Road, and then in fact we can take you. Oh, actually. Uh, I'll set the points first, so let's do that. We're taking you up into platform 11. And soon we're going to get this guy pop up over here. Yeah. Okay, so he wants to come in on 11, but uh, no, you're not coming in on 11. We are going to take you in on platform 12 instead. 
Um, and then you have to go in on platform one. Uh, we will then bring you down to two. So westbound goes on platform two. Um, and then westbound out. Uh, Eccles on platform two as well. Um, and no collisions on any of these platforms. So we are good. Um, so uh, accept you to 12. Moving in two minutes, which again is just enough time for him to get out of the way, for us to change the points to send you through there. Get ready to send him on to platform two there. And then we will change this, uh, these points up here and these points here and send him all the way through to the end. And then this guy is just finished, so we get to accept our third train. And then by the time this guy has made it all the way to Eccles, which is going to be just after nine o'clock, uh, that will be our fourth train. And we have now scheduled... Uh, oops. So this is the uh, this is the the very first train that we had unscheduled uh, coming back again. Uh, it's almost nine o'clock. Um, so bring him in there, and that is the end of the first hour of the game. And that's what that ping was uh, telling us. We have your scorecard, uh, which is three. Uh, so we completed the runs of three trains, or we got a total of three XP. Um, in that hour from the three green trains that completed. Uh, this one hasn't quite yet finished, uh, so it's falling into the next hour. Um, and it shows us uh, how much money we earned from those trains, uh, so 6,000 credits. Um, and if we didn't have any penalties, uh, we didn't have any upkeep from any uh, track, uh, we didn't spend any money on construction, so uh, that was all fine. Uh, so pretty simple to begin with. What we have done is um, we now have three green experience points uh, to spend. Um, this three here is showing you how many green experience we're earning per hour or how many uh, it's our, our maximum green experience earned per hour, uh, which is three. And this is our number of green experience points. Uh, so if we don't change anything else for the next hour of the game, this will still be at three, but this will be at six because we'll have earned another three gold, uh, green experience. Um, and we can spend the experience that we've earned on these various upgrades. Um, now, the first one that I'm going to get uh, is not auto blocks here that's highlighted, but is auto accept trains. Um, and uh, we accept that with that. Our green experience goes down to zero. Uh, and now that is going to save us clicking on one thing. So that little um, circle that appeared um, at the beginning of the platform that we had to click, and then we had to click on the platform to accept the train in, that circle will now no longer appear. The train will just automatically come into the platform now. Um, so that makes our life a little bit easier. Um, but um, we just now need to keep scheduling these things uh, manually or, or Keep routing these things manually uh, and get them into the correct platforms. Um, okay, so that was the fourth train completing. Uh, so we can accept that. Okay, so our next goal is going to be to get up to five green experience. Uh, and that's going to unlock uh, automatic routing. Um, so these are auto signals, which are incredibly useful. Uh, and they are going to stop us having to click on all of the points and set all of the points. Uh, we'll just be able to click on the signal, click on the station we want it to go to, uh, or click on the platform the station we want it to go to, and it will just automatically set all the points for us and route the train there. Uh, so that will make yeah, life much easier. Um, but until we get there, we've got to keep manually doing it. Uh, so uh, just making sure I've got all this right. We'll take you in there. To get up to five experience, um, we can either go through another hour, which will get us another uh, three more. We'll be up to four, and then we'll have to do another one. Uh, but we want to try and get there as quickly as we can. So let's start accepting some more contracts. So let's see what we've got available. 
uh, we have uh, going from Eccles to Navigation Road uh, and then back to Eccles again. Navigation Road is another station uh, that is goodness knows where, but we don't have it <laughs> uh, because uh, you can see that it says buy at least one station in every contract station to accept. Buy at least one platform in every contract station to accept. So we don't have the money to buy a platform at Navigation Road, even if we could find it. So I'm just going to reject that contract. Um, and periodically, we'll get offered new ones. Uh, Manchester Piccadilly to Manchester Oxford Road to Eccles. We can certainly do that. Um, so the, the stations that these contracts appear at, basically, um, one of the stations on the route will be the station that the contract appears at. So you can see this has Eccles in it. Uh, both of these will have Deansgate in it. Uh, it's going from Eccles to Deansgate and then back to Eccles again. Um, we've got what? Manchester Piccadilly to Oxford Road, back to Manchester Piccadilly again. Eccles to Manchester Oxford Road, back to Eccles again. Uh, Manchester Piccadilly, Manchester Oxford Road, Manchester Piccadilly. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, accept uh, this one because it's basically like what we've got right now except it doesn't actually stop at Deansgate. So we can probably slot this in um, with what we are currently scheduling. What is going to be useful though is for us to get up the timetables of all of these stations so we can see what's what, basically. Um, so let's bring up Manchester Piccadilly, Manchester Oxford Road, Deansgate, and Eccles. And then we can see at a glance when stuff is due to arrive in. So if we are thinking about taking... Uh, Oh, they also appear, um, you, you can have these timetables just appear above the stations, uh, or you can kind of pin them to the left-hand side of the screen over here, which is what I like to do. I'll just get rid of this. Because um, these ones over here can sometimes end up like that, blocking the actual track itself. Um, so, uh, let's, uh, let's see. So starting at Manchester Piccadilly, uh, and it's heading west, so we want it in on 12, ideally. Uh, so we've got time to do that, I think. Uh, so we would choose to bring it in on platform 12. Uh, then uh, platform 1 of Manchester Oxford Road is a problem. Because there's going to be another train there at that time. Um, and then it's got to go through Deansgate anyway. We would take it through 2 as a westbound train and then end up platform 2 at Eccles, which would be fine. So the only problem currently is Manchester Oxford Road. Um, which is a pain. Uh, we only got one station there. So what I would like to do is buy another station. Um, which we can now afford. We've got 9,000 credits. Another, each, another platform. Sorry, another platform at the station. Another platform costs $2,000. Uh, we're just going to buy... Uh, actually, I'm going to buy platform three. Because what I'm thinking is that at some point I'm going to want to have... Uh, one and two is eastbound platforms, and three and four is westbound platforms. Um, we've got a little bit of a problem with the with the contracts we've already accepted that are due to go into platform one. Um, actually, at this stage in the game, we can't even change the platform on the contract. So we would um, we could we could still uh, route the train to a different platform and take a financial penalty from doing that, uh, but we can't actually change the contract. Um, one of the technology upgrades will actually let us uh, change the platform that a contracted train is due to come in on. Um, and as long as we've done, uh, I think it's as long as we've done five trains, we can do that without penalty. Um, anyway, I'm just going to buy platform three. Then do we have enough money, though, is still the question, to actually... Uh, get there. I think we're probably going to have to uh, still reuse some track. Because we're just not going to have enough. Uh, so doing that gets us down to 3,000. And then if I come out here like this and up like that, we can afford that. So that's not bad. So if we go back to this contract... Uh, in on platform 12 we are designating our westbound platform 
Now go down to platform three and Manchester Oxford Road. And so now we've got no longer got this collision. Um, into two at Deansgate and into two on Eccles. And that's all fine. There's no collisions anywhere there. Um, the only problem that there could still be though is uh, contention on a set uh, on a section of track. Um, we will discover that as and when we do it. So if we do this, we will get 1600 credits uh, every time we complete this contract. Um, the maximum is 4,000. The reason that we're not getting 4,000 uh, is that this commuter train travels at a max speed of 120 kilometers per hour. Uh, and currently we only have the track uh, that lets the trains go at 40 kilometers per hour. So you can see that from this preview here. It's going to take three minutes to get along uh, to get from here to here. And it's going to be traveling on average 32 kilometers per hour. Um, so as we go through the game and we're able to build a uh, faster track, um, we will be able to start getting the maximum value of these contracts. But now though, we've just got to, um, we just got to take what we can get basically. So I'm going to accept that. If it does turn out that there's contention on a track, that's going to make that train really late. Uh, we will find out about that when we run the trial train through, um, and that we may then want to choose to reject the contract rather than taking it. Um, what I really want to do is, is, is build eastbound and westbound track in this section, because this is a pretty, um, pretty contentious section at the moment. Uh, but anyway, so this is the one that we just, ac um, contract we just accepted. So in it comes, um, and then we're going to Manchester Oxford Road platform three. Ah, now, so we can't route that through now because we've, uh, we've cleared this train all the way through to Manchester Piccadilly and we've got contention here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, unset that signal, change those points, set this through first, cause this is leaving in one minute. Whereas this train is still got two minutes before it leaves for Manchester Oxford Road. Um, Bring those guys in there, and then parallel here so we can send you through to Deansgate there. You're going on to uh, platform 11, send you through now. On pause again. I generally I like to keep this, the, the game running at 25 times speed, um, and then just pause when, uh, when I need to think about what I'm doing. Uh, but you can just, you know, set things to kind of crawl along at normal time um, if you prefer or any uh, any speed in between. Okay, so here we've got our um, our 915 train coming back for the first time. Um, so he's going, now he is going to, uh, to platform one. Uh, there's nothing we can do that, but that's okay. Because we know that this guy will be out of the way in time. Uh, the next person coming into Eccles uh, is not for a while, uh, so we can actually send him all the way through now, and we know that he's going to be good. Once he's through there, uh, we set that, we clear him through. The tricky thing about this map is it's it's kind of long, so you have to keep keep scrolling. I mean, you can you can zoom all the way out, I guess, but. Panning around. This is all going to get so much easier once we have automation. Um, we will get to a point where we just literally don't need to do anything uh, for these trains uh, and they will just run automatically through the routes uh, that they need to go. And that will let us, that will free us up to basically go and schedule more trains elsewhere on the map. Okay, so this guy has just completed. Um, so everything was fine. Um, 1600 was what we expected to get because we're not going as fast as we can. So we're just going to accept that contract. Um, and uh, you're going on to Deansgate platform two. So we've got to set that there. We've got to set that there, route really you through there. Uh, the next train should be coming in on Eccles at 9.30. Uh, 9.30, you're leaving 9.26, so we probably can get you through first. Uh, 
And you can see uh, he automatically came into the platform. We didn't have to click that little circle. Uh, and that was because of that uh, auto accept trains upgrade that we bought there. Does mean that we have to keep an eye out <laughs> for trains coming in. Um, yeah, on the um, on the map here, this you can see there's a little marker inside the train that shows that the train is arriving uh, at the station. Um, and if there's no little marker inside it, like this or this, um, it, it means that, uh, the train is is entering its or is beginning its run at that station. Um, and if there isn't one of those little markers inside it. Uh, that means it is not beginning its run at that station. Um, it's some station along the way. Uh, okay, so you've gone through. You're almost ready to leave. You're going to platform one on Dean's Gate. So we send you through there. Um, and um, are there any other contracts that we can accept? Uh, now, these ones that are going... Uh, in two oh, actually, these these are okay. Um, so the trains that we've got at the moment um, are all uh, commuter trains, uh, which means they have a locomotive at the front and the back of the train. The trains that we're going to get later on in the game uh, will only have a locomotive at one end of the train. Uh, what that means is that if you need to send them back in the direction that they came from, either you end up pushing the train with a locomotive at the back, which makes the train travel slower, which means you don't get as much money from the route. Um, or you have to uh, get involved in some more complex scheduling uh, to turn the uh, to turn the train around. Uh, or even uh, later on in the game, you can detach the locomotives from the train uh, and move the locomotive to the other end of the train. But with commuter trains with a locomotive at both ends, we don't have to worry about that. Um, so that does make things a little bit easier uh, for us. However, I am wondering... Um, yeah, okay, sure. Why not? Uh, arrive at Manchester Piccadilly, go to Manchester Oxford Road, and then back to Manchester Piccadilly. We can probably slot that in somewhere. So Manchester Piccadilly... Our westbound platform is platform 12. There's nothing arriving at that just now. Uh, so we took it in there and then we took it to platform three, which is our westbound platform there. And then back out at platform 11, which is our eastbound platform. Uh, that might be all right. That might work. Um, there's certainly no collisions at the platforms again. It'd just be a question of are we going to get involved in any contention on this bit of track here. But now I'm just going to accept it. Um, it's only getting us a thousand credits, but at this stage, whatever credits we can get, the better. And really, we're just trying to get as many trains done within an hour as possible so that we can uh, get this up and start automating some of this stuff. Uh, so, arriving at platform 12. You are going to platform three at Oxford Road. Let's send you through there. But I've got to keep an eye on these guys. Okay. Going to through to Dean's, I know, Dean's Gate one. You're going to Manchester Oxford Road one. That's fine. We can send you there now. And then uh, we need to send this guy back uh, to Manchester Piccadilly. So what we've got to do is uh, reverse the train because he's currently pointing uh, westwards, as you can see from the uh, from the light at the front of the train. If we right click on him, that flips around um, and he's going to head back that way. Uh, you're leaving, what, in one minute? Uh, so that's fine. You're going to be first. Uh, so we will set points first and then set the signal and send him back there is an upgrade that we can unlock that will uh, warn us if a train is sat at a signal uh, but we do not yet have that 
Uh, okay, so this uh, symbol here that's appeared on the platform is just showing us that there is a train due to arrive at that platform in 8 minutes and 31 seconds. Uh, which is this one, which is fine. We know about that. This guy isn't going to stay there for very long. So he goes. Uh, we're happy with that, so we'll accept the contract. Uh, and then we want to set this. And then as soon as he's cleared that platform, we can send him through. Now we could start building some more signals so that we don't have to clear him all the way into the platform. Um, I'm going to hold off doing that for right now because we don't need to do it yet. Send you through now. Um, duh, 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 duh. Eccles. The next one's not arriving at Eccles until 10 o'clock, so that's fine. We've got time there. Uh, you're clear. So we can send you through uh, to platform one. And we have the five green experience. So let's spend it on automatic writing. Um, so this unlocks um, the auto signals, um, which tells us about here. Um, uh, and it also helps us prevent collisions as well. Uh, so these things will basically automatically set the points. Um, and they will not let two trains collide. So let's build some. Um, which many have we got? 8,000. So auto signals are quite expensive. 5,000 credits to build. So we can only actually afford one at the moment. Um, so uh, I'm actually not going to build it uh, at Manchester Oxford Road. Uh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm going to build it Manchester Oxford Road. Why not? Uh, so we're going to build over the manual signal. Uh, and now um, this makes our life easier because rather than having to click this to set it um, and potentially this point to set it as well if it was set the wrong way, we can just click this uh, and say we want to open up a path all the way to platform two at Deansgate. And then it just sets everything for us. Um, so this is a big step along the way um, towards still not automating things, uh, but at least making the manual uh, scheduling of the trains much easier. Uh, we can actually afford another one, so I'm going to buy another one. Uh, we're going to put that one over that one. And then we're going to say uh, this guy needs to go to Eccles platform two. So click that. Click platform two at Eccles. Boom. Everything's set. Take the train in directly there. Zoom out a bit so I can see when more trains are coming. Okay, so here's one just coming to Eccles. Uh, you are leaving in three minutes. And that is our second hour complete. Uh, so the red exclamation mark just telling us that we have a new progress report to see. Uh, so that in that hour, uh, we managed to get six trains uh, through, or six experience points worth of trains. Every green train, like I say, is worth one green experience point. Um, some of the red trains will be worth multiple experience points. But the greens are currently just one experience point per train. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we earned uh, 10,600 credits. Uh, and we spent a lot of money uh, on construction, uh, so we had a net loss for that hour. Um, but that's all right. Uh, we are making our life easier. Um, that is probably a good point to wrap up this first video. Uh, in that it's giving you a very high level overview of what the game is all about. I haven't shown you any automation stuff yet, uh, and that's going to be uh, the next thing that we are going to uh, try to unlock. Um, so we can uh, unlock things like Perpetual Circuit, uh, which will, uh, once we uh, set one of these auto signals, and it only works for auto signals, um, normally when we, when we clear a train through with an auto signal, once the train has gone through, 
uh, the track goes white again. Um, but with a perpetual circuit, you could set it so that it will go green again, and so it will be it will automatically clear the next train through. Uh, now that's not something that you want to do on a stretch of line like this, where you have trains going in both directions, uh, but where you've got a, a single uh, direction line uh, that uh, can make life uh, easier, and and it's the first kind of tentative step in uh, in automation. Um, the the next kind of thing that's going to help us with automation is the is the relay sensor. Uh, which is a slightly better version of the perpetual circuit. Um, and then we're going to get to things like departure sensors and arrival sensors um, in tier two. Uh, so obviously we've, then, we've got to have uh, 10 green XP per hour, which is actually not that difficult. I mean, we're already at six. Uh, so getting another four trains through uh, in the hour is, is not going to be hard. Um, and then tier three, the routing sensor, uh, makes our life even easier still. Um, so there's a lot still to see in the game um, and a lot to uh, go over. Uh, and I will do that in subsequent videos. But for now, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. And until next time, this is BDA Liner signing out. Bye for now.